Hey internet, so I told you guys that there were going to be like quite a few hauls this week and part of that is I did some duty free shopping when I was at Hong Kong airport on my way home and I'd heard that they had lots of good stuff and lots of selection in um, their kind of beauty store area. I don't know why I'm getting so tongue tied over something so silly. You guys know what I mean, the duty free store in the airport. Um, and they certainly did. So I picked up some things that I have been wanting for quite a while. Um, I think possibly the most exciting thing out of the five things that I got there is this perfume. And this is YSL's Parisienne and it's the Eau de Parfum, not the Eau de Toilette. So the other one that you often see everywhere and in advertisements is a light pink bottle and this one is more of a purpley color and this is like the exact color of Lincoln Park After Dark which I think is gorgeous. I was very attracted to this bottle when I saw it on the shelf and I had smelled the other one like a bazillion times. Um, when I did my perfume video, um, like the collection video, a few weeks or months ago actually I guess, um, I told you guys that I was considering buying this perfume and that I had been doing so for like years basically, like two three years um, ever since it came out I guess um, and every time I go into a Sephora I will often go in and give it a sniff um, but I had never seen this particular one before or it hadn't really grabbed my attention. This version of it is what really pushed me over the edge into buying it because it is exactly like the other one but it's a little bit more sultry and a little bit less sweet um, but it's still a very like nice perfume for springtime let me just kind of spray it on myself Oh, it's just, it's so nice. It's a very romantic perfume. It is rose-based, so if you absolutely detest fragrances with rose, you probably won't like this, although I will say that um, it doesn't have any kind of old ladyness to it at all, and it has been described as a powdery scent by some, but I don't really think that it is. It's more of a musky floral, so... Um, the top note is rose, and then in the middle notes it has some lily of the valley and violet, and then underneath all that there is some suede and musk, and I think that's it. I'm not missing anything out, but in any case, to me, it does have a little bit of a fruity element to it, but it's not sweet at all. In a way, it reminds me of, like, maybe a dry white wine or something like that, because... It has a really nice richness, it's very feminine, romantic like I already said, but it's also very dry, but not too powdery. So I really like, it's so funny because I guess like I was in like with it for so long and now that I actually own it or own a version of it, um, the EDP, I am so in love with it. And if you guys may be looking for a not too sweet but still very fresh but sort of grown up spring scent, then I very highly recommend this because I've been wearing it over the last four days because I was in Vancouver before I got home to Victoria so I was wearing it there and every time I wear it I'm just I fall in love with it all over again so that is my first little purchase and then onwards from there I purchased a new Kiehl's creamy eye treatment um, I haven't used this for a while but I did own a jar back when I was in college and it lasted me absolutely forever it's a really nice eye cream to wear during the day because it um, doesn't make your makeup smudge at all so you can see the sort of light yellowy color of that it is made with real avocados um, and I really really like it I've tried um, other products from Kiehl's before, but I think this is basically my all-time favorite thing from them. Um, it is just really nice to use, it spreads on nicely, it doesn't gunk up on you, and it's just the uh, right amount of richness for my age, and it's not too expensive either. I don't have a receipt here to tell you, but I think it's under $30, which I think for an eye cream is actually like a really reasonable price. Um, so yeah. Then the next thing that I got is pretty exciting too actually. Maybe this is my favorite thing from the haul other than the perfume. Um, so I got this from Dior. You can see the packaging. It's called Rosy Glow and it's the color 001 but there is no other color. It only comes in one color and they call that color Petal. Um, 
And this is quite a neat little sort of science-y product. It is meant to be this universal blush that adjusts to any skin tone that you can brighten up by layering, but that is very sort of natural looking, which is quite funny. Look at the packaging, by the way. It comes in a little velvet envelope in the same way that Chanel products do, but it says CD on the front. I've never, like, I can't remember the last time I brought any, bought anything from Dior other than Dior Show Mascara, which is definitely an all-time favorite for me, but it's so expensive that I, like, never buy it. Um, so there you go. This is the packaging. Oh my goodness, look at that. You can, like, see the sea view on it. It is just that mirrored, and then it's got a clear acrylic underneath, and... I don't know, I just think this is so cool. It looks really intimidating in the packaging. Look at that. It almost looks a bit like a hot neon lilac -y pink in the pan, but almost thankfully it doesn't look like anything like that on the cheeks. It just looks like a really pretty warm light pink flush. And I'm wearing it today, but I don't think it will kill me to put a little bit more on. Um, the, the brush that it comes with it is all right. Um, but it's not great, but are they ever? Um, so you can see it's just really, really nice. And I'm just so happy to have it because I'm pretty much in like a one year blush rut where the only blush that I've been wearing is um, the Tarte Amazonian Clay ones that are amazing, but I'm a beauty junkie and sometimes I really want to try new things, but just nothing has stood up to those blushes in terms of wear and pigmentation. Um, although I will say with blushes, I feel like everybody talks about pigmentation, but where and how it applies and how natural is it looks is really more important than pigmentation because when you think about it like the ultimately pigmented blush would really just make you look like a clown because the pink pigmentation of it would just look really noticeable on your cheeks so I think that's actually not the ultimate attribution that you want from a blush you want it more to be velvety and nice and go on very smoothly without any smudging on top of your foundation you want it to last all day and to look really soft um, like a natural flush would and this has definitely met all of those expectations. So, and then I got two Chanel eyeshadows. Um, I have been wanting to try the color Fauve, which is 9-0 for so long. And while I was at it, I also picked up Safari, which is very, very similar. So you can see those right there. Safari is 45, and like I said, Fauve is 90. And these are the single eyeshadows. Um, I've owned the quads before and some of their limited edition eyeshadow quads. And although I really like them, I love the packaging, they're really high quality, I can't say that I've found that they have been worth the money so far. And I actually think maybe these singles are a little bit better quality, just in terms of being like a very pigmented eyeshadow, because you do want your eyeshadow to be pigmented, that is a good thing, um, instead of being more shimmery like the others that I've owned before are. So this is the famous Fauve, which is definitely a darling of the beauty community. I know Amarique's really likes it. And as soon as she talked about it, and talked about it in terms of being a plummy, um, sort of taupe color, reminiscent of, um, MAC Satin Taupe. I have a fauve right up here, and you can see how pretty that is. And then underneath, I'm just gonna add some of Safari, which I have on today. And... They're very, very similar. If I wasn't like a taupe obsessy, I probably would have just bought one. But I did get both. So you can see Safari underneath is a little bit more brown and more nude. Um, it's definitely lighter than Fauve is. Um, and I just bought them because I thought they would look really pretty together. And so I have done a look where I use Safari on the inside of the eye and um, Fauve on the outside. So you get that kind of elongated look of going from lighter to darker which is very flattering on almost any eye shape um i just think they're both so gorgeous and pearly they have a little bit of shimmer but it's just they're very creamy just the way they wear on the skin and i haven't noticed any creasing from them nothing bad no fading no nothing they're just 
great and I love them both. Over the five items that I got, I'm very happy with everything I purchased. I do think that everything I got was worth it and I don't regret buying any of it, even though it means that I'm kind of on a cosmetics ban for now. Um, I feel like I really need to take a breather and enjoy the things that I have, do some beauty tutorial, um, do maybe some of the food nutrition videos that I've promised you guys over the next couple of weeks for sure as well. Um, and yeah, so little shopping ban on me, but that said, I've been away for so long that I'm just happy to be reunited with my collection, and I don't really feel the urge to go out and buy a lot more things just because there's so much to enjoy between what I got when I was in China and what I already had here as well. So yeah, I don't know why I felt the need to have that little ramble. Other than that, um, telling you guys about my shopping ban kind of makes me accountable to not buy things because if I did, then I would want to haul it and show you guys. So yeah, it's basically just about holding myself accountable to that promise. I'm so happy I finally went out and bought this perfume because I hesitated about it for so long and I think it was just, it was a good thing to do. So yeah, that's it. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.